I'm pretty sure this is going to be the inverter that Best Tech sent me. Mm -hmm. This is my son Peter. Hello. And uh, we're going to unbox this and make sure we got what we think we have. Please enjoy my stories or whatever else might be on my mind today. Best Tech. Best Tech. Best Tech. The Best Tech. The Best Tech. What do we have? We have some registration papers and some fuses. Ah, fuses. Some cables. Oh, look at it. It's pretty. <laughs> nice red color, huh? So that is what an inverter looks like. Best Tech 2000 watt inverter. Oh, check this out. Oh, it's got double cables. You know, that's one of the things about an inverter, is that it can't operate at its full capacity unless it's got enough power coming from the battery through the wires, and if the wires are too small, it can't operate at its full capacity. I'm glad to see that we have two cables for negative and two cables for positive and two places to hook them up. That way we've got twice the amount of wire. What does an inverter do exactly? <laughs> I see a big metal shiny box here. It, but It just sits there and looks pretty. And doesn't it look pretty? <laughs> it does look pretty. <laughs> That's what it would do for me, but what will you be using it for? <laughs> um, an inverter converts 12 volt battery power in your car, or in my case, my RV. Uh, or your pickup if you're out there trying to run your power tools. 12 volt battery power to household current, which is 110 or 120 volt AC power. So DC to AC, 12 volts to 120 volts. So anything with the plug-in that I plug in in the house, I can plug in there? That's correct. And there are three plug-ins right here. See? One, two, three. Mm -hmm. And an on-off switch. So it's got some heft to it because there's a lot of internal wire in there. That's part of the mechanism that uh, transforms the electricity from battery power to house power. Feels solid. Yeah, it does. So besides looking pretty, it does things. Anyway, we're going to hook this up to the Suzuki. I'll try it in the motorhome and, and see if it'll run some stuff too. But um, I'm mainly interested in having it hooked up to my car. Mm -hmm. So we'll do that but we can't do it in your kitchen. <laughs> well, we have hooked up the inverter to the battery and uh, turning it on, the little light goes from red to green immediately, meaning it's got enough power. And we're going to, just for a test, see if we can run the leaf blower. We're in Oregon, everything is wet. We'll see how it works. Green light, not taxing it at all. So, test number two with the Best Tech inverter. I've got it hooked up to my Suzuki, and that's not a big battery. That's a fairly small battery as cars go. We're plugged in. Notice that the light down there is green, meaning there's no problem doing what it's doing. And 
the coffee is perking. Smells good too. <laughs> <laughs> it's a cold rainy morning here in Oregon and uh, that cup of coffee is going to be real good. Still going, still green and I hear the coffee pot over here finishing up. Let's plug a couple of other things into that inverter and see how it works. Well, I now have three power tools plugged in. And it's an angle grinder, a drill, and a saber saw. And as my friend, the crazy Russian hacker on YouTube always says, safety first. The angle grinder. Oh, you do have to turn on the inverter. <laughs> the power drill. Saber saw. Let's try two at the same time. I'm looking at. I was looking at the green light. Never wavered. I'd do three at a time, but I'd probably cut my arm off. An editing note here, that background noise you hear is not the fan in that inverter running. It never came on, meaning it didn't need to, because it didn't overheat. And uh, what you do hear is my diesel furnace running in the motorhome. And that uh, leaf blower that we did yesterday, that was a 1200 watt, well a 12 amp motor which is be a little more than 1200 watts and um, it worked perfectly also well I'll have another test set up for us and this time I have a voltage meter hooked up it's reading 108 109 volts and when I turn the drill on The voltage goes up and down and uh, goes up to 119, 120 volts as something is running and I find that a little curious. I think it's probably made to do that to compensate for the load and I'm actually going to do a little research on that. Perhaps one more test would be a good idea and that would be is my car going to start after all of that? No problem. Well, I gotta get these power tools out of the rain. Tell you the truth, my favorite way to get these power tools out of the rain would be to head back towards Arizona. Hi friends, inverter coffee. Well, if you're going to have somebody tell you about an inverter, you probably ought to ask if they know anything about inverters. And I'm certainly not an expert, but I've used them for many years. And uh, whether I know anything about inverters or not, uh, I'll let you be the judge of that. <laughs> I did look up the question about why does the voltage increase as you demand uh, power, like when we turned on the drill and the voltage went up. This is written by an electrical engineer, 
Now we generally use modified sine wave inverters for most of our applications. If we supply electricity suddenly, then by an inverter, there will be a sudden increment of load demand, and that sudden demand of supply from the inverter, the output waveform will suddenly go to its peak value within a very short interval. I understand most of those words, but if you are one of those electrical engineers or a physicist, we probably don't need to know any more about that other than it just works really good. Let me read you some of the technical specifications of this inverter off of the Amazon website. And you can find a link to this in the video description below and also Best Tech will give you a discount off of the Amazon price, making it an even better deal. It provides 2,000 watts continuous DC to AC power, 2,300 watts maximum output, not continuous output, but it will do 4,600 watts of peak surge power to start your gear featuring three 110 volt AC outlets. It will run household appliances or large electrical devices on trips, camping, or work sites such as a floodlight, TV, freezer, laptop, DVD player, PSP, a camera, or recharging your mobile phone, your iPad, etc. Solid and durable, the aluminum housing provides the best protection from drops and bumps and you can it can stand up to a harsh environment. It's ideal for using on the road, at campsites, remote job sites, or anywhere that AC power is needed. And I just learned this as I'm reading it. There is an 18-month warranty. So what do I think of this? Well, first of all, it's very nice looking. Uh, it seems to be very well built. I love the fact that there's a handle here. Uh, for carrying it around. I'm not going to permanently install this even though you could there are permanent installation holes here down on the base. It seems to be very well built. This appears to be aluminum. It's all metal. There's no plastic except for the grab handle here and uh, probably anodized aluminum. I'm just liking the apparent quality of it. Uh, best tech um, seems like it might be the best. I love the fact that it has double cables. I've had a lot of inverters and most of them come with one single little cable and it doesn't supply enough battery power. It doesn't deliver enough power from the battery to the inverter to allow it to operate at its full capacity. The fact that it's not only a double cable but a double hookup back here, I'm sold on that. I noticed another thing in inverters I've had in the past um, of this capacity, I've noticed that the fan will run a lot. Now, in my old Southwind I had a 2000 watt inverter and I put it underneath my dash so that I could get to the switch to turn it on and off. And uh, I ran my TV with it and uh, I made coffee in the morning. Worked fine, except the fan ran a lot and that was annoying when I was watching TV. And all the things that we did out there, including making coffee, I did not hear the fan run, except when you first turn it on, the fan will go for just a second in order to, I don't know, let you know it works maybe. <laughs> so I know the fan works, but it didn't come on, meaning the thing was not stressed and under load, and that the technology is that it's not going to run unless it needs to run. That would be important to me. Oh, the fuses right here. That package of fuses I got when we were unboxing it, turns out those are extra fuses. It's nice that they included those. Anyway, I'm sold. I like it. Do I know anything about inverters? Yeah. 
Let me give you a hint if you decide to use an inverter, whether it's this one or any other inverter, get as close to the battery as possible with the biggest cables you can get. Doubles good. And then run extension cords as far as you want to go. Now, when we we're doing the leaf blower, we we're using a, I think that was a hundred foot extension cord. <clears throat> and what that'll do is it'll drop the voltage because it's so far away. 12 volt power with high amperage, you need it to be close to the batteries, otherwise the voltage will drop below what the inverter needs. But once you have it converted to 110 or 120 volt um, power, that higher voltage can go a long ways. I had, again, in my old Southwind, why do I talk about that? Well, this is a 40 foot diesel pusher. I have a 3000 watt pure sign inverter in here that cost over $2,000 and other associated things that go with it. I had to replace it one time and it was a nearly a $5,000 bill. This thing on Amazon is $129 and it doesn't do everything that that $2,000 one does because it's also an inverter charger and it has an electrical management system and anyway. I'm not making a comparison there, but I'm talking about my old Southwind because I didn't have all of that $5,000 worth of stuff in my old Southwind. I had things like this and used them for years. And I can tell you from that experience and having owned many different models and many different sizes in terms of how many watts, that this is a good one. And it's going to now be a part of my Suzuki. So click on that link below and see what kind of a discount they're going to give us. And do that right after you give me a like. Thanks. Oh, and one more thing. I'm talking to a friend of mine this morning and he says, well, you don't need uh, an inverter. You've got all of those power tools that run off of batteries. And you know what? He's right. <laughs> However, Two things. My coffee pot doesn't run off of batteries. And batteries don't run off of batteries. You have to plug them in to a battery charger. And what do you plug this into? Eh? Hey, if you like me, give me one of those thumbs up. And please subscribe and hit that little bell so you know when I post next. Please share me with your friends on social media. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed what was on my mind today.